What's up guys, this is Josh here from Blender Bros. I'm gonna show you something very interesting in this video. I'm gonna show you how to fix shading, even if it's a really bad shading, without retopology, and I'm gonna explain why this works as well so you intuitively understand it. Let's go. Now, real quick, before we get started, if you're brand new to Blender, check out our Hard Surface Accelerator program in the description below. This is gonna teach you all the basics, all the modeling fundamentals, design fundamentals, rendering fundamentals, literally everything that you need to know to get results like all of our students here in just about two weeks of time with just 30 to 60 minutes a day. So I'll link that program in the description below. All right, what I need to do here to show you is I need to add in a cylinder. I'm gonna to go to mesh, cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and add in some loop cuts into the cylinder here, just to kind of make um, all these areas square more or less so they're not rectangle. And then what I wanna do is I want to select, um, let me select all these vertices here, all right? And then I'm going to go to select, check or deselect. I'm going to use something like hard ops to add a circle here. Alternatively, you could go in control shift B to bevel the vertices, scroll up twice, and then you could just change the profile here. That's another strategy as well. I'm just going to use the hard ops circle. It's going to be perfect, a perfect circle. So we're going to do that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to delete out these faces right here, okay? And now you're gonna see we have some, uh, you know, faceted from the cylinder, some faceting. So all we need to do is right click to shade auto smooth. And I'm just gonna delete out these top and bottom faces so they're not in the way here. All right, now you probably can't see it, but if I go into matte cap right here and I go to a very unforgiving matte cap like this one, you can see the shading is absolutely atrocious. It's terrible. Now the reason this is happening, just to kind of give you a basic explanation, and then I'll give you the technical explanation, but you can kind of think of these areas, these engons here as being bent, quote unquote, okay? I'm gonna give you the technical explanation as well because this is gonna just make everything make sense, all right? Um, but obviously, a very easy way to fix this problem would be to just retopologize this. You could just use something like quad remesher. It'll retopologize it into quads. Like for example, let me just quickly show you. I don't want to you know waste too much time in this video because we all have things to do. But just to make this quick, for example, if I went in here and did something, let's do something like this for example. Go in here, we'll use loop tools, change this to circle, turn off flatten, right? We'll delete that face. And then what I could basically do, and again, I know I'm going fast here, but this isn't a beginner's tutorial. This is meant for me to show you something. You know, if I were to go in here and then just subdivide this a few times, shade smooth, right? You can kind of imagine if I arrayed this all the way around, like for example, if I went in here and duplicated this, Try to make this quick and then join this all together, right? We'll just get rid of those overlaps. Go to M, merge by distance, and then you know I ran a sub D. You're gonna see like very clearly, I know we don't have as many holes on this one as here, but you can see the shading is uh, you know a lot nicer, right? So you know that's one option is you could go for like the manual clean topology route, right? But there's actually a much better way to fix this that can be used outside of Blender as well, and that is by just adjusting the orientation of the normals. Now, I made a video here recently, I'll put it on the screen, explaining how normals work. Definitely check out that video so you understand, but I'm also gonna show you here. So the first thing I wanna show you is how the normals look on a uh, surface like this with very, very bad shading, and then I wanna show you how it looks on a surface that has corrected normals, all right? So the first thing I wanna do before I change anything here is I wanna go in, I wanna add in just a basic cylinder here, same amount of vertices as the one with the holes, and then I'm just gonna delete out the top and bottom here. So obviously on this one, the shading is perfectly clean because we don't have any, it's just a plain cylinder, right? So what I can actually do is I can transfer the normal information from this one 
over to this one. And I know I've made videos on this before, but I haven't shown you how it works on a technical level. I'm gonna do that right here, okay? So I'm just gonna call this clean shading so I know, and we're gonna hide that, all right? And then I'm just gonna duplicate this one, and I'm gonna call this one transferred shading. And then for this one right here, I'm just gonna call this bad shading, just so we kinda of know which one is which. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna to go to this one with transferred shading and actually transfer the shading. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to edit, data transfer. We're gonna choose the clean shading. I'm gonna to go to face corner data, custom normals, projected face interpolated, just like that. And you're gonna see this is the transferred shading. It is very, very clean. So no problems there, all right? Now this one right here, is the one obviously with the bad shading. So I wanna show you the difference in the normal orientation between this one and this one right here. This is gonna make a lot more sense, okay? So in order to actually apply the changes here to make sure they're baked in, locked in, and to see them in edit mode, I need to apply this modifier right here. So I'm going to apply that data transfer and now it's gonna be locked in. All right, so now what I first wanna do is I wanna to go to this bad shading, go into edit mode, and I wanna go up here to this button to turn on the split normals, all right? I'm gonna go into the top view here, and I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. So you can kinda of see the direction of these normals here. Technically, these normals are not perpendicular to the corresponding vertex. If they were, the shading would be flat and clean, all right? So if I were to go to the one with good shading, the one that's called transferred shading right here, let me um, go into edit mode here. It looks basically the same, but it's slightly different. Let me show you. If I turn on the bad shading one again, you can see the normals here. And actually, in order to see both, I need to select both. So let me just make sure both are selected at the same time. Now if I go into edit mode here, you're gonna see the positioning is actually very different from the one with bad shading and the one with clean shading. The one with the clean shading here where we transfer the normals, now for each vertex, these normals are actually perpendicular to them, all right? However, on the one with bad shading, they are not perpendicular and hence they are bending the shading. You can see the difference very clearly. This is the bad shading normals, this is the good shading normals. And as a result, we now have perfectly clean shading because those normals for those vertices are perpendicular. All right, so I know this doesn't look perpendicular. I know it looks slightly bent compared to the grid right here, but remember this portion is also going in this direction a little bit. So trust me, if I were to like move this up to this point, this is actually, it, it, it is actually perpendicular. So take my word for it, all right? And you're gonna see very clearly in solid mode, that is why we have clean shading. And you might be wondering, you know, does this only work in Blender? No, we've transferred the actual normal information over. This can be used and exported outside of Blender without retopologizing. Now granted, you might need to, you know, triangulate this for outside of Blender, right? Control T, uh, you know, you can do all that stuff on your own if you want, but yes, this can be used outside of Blender because you transferred the normal information over and now the shading is perfect. So the solution isn't always retopology. Maybe you wanna go that route. I don't know, it depends what you're trying to accomplish. But in a situation like this, you can see very clearly, I just transferred the normal information over, I applied the modifier, and now I have very clean shading. So now the normals for all these vertices are completely perpendicular and hence the shading is now registered as, as flat. So I hope that makes sense. This is probably something you haven't really seen too much out there. And I hope you, you, know, you can use this in your workflow because it's a very, very powerful strategy. And just to prove to you that this actually works outside of Blender, I can literally take this one. I'm gonna go to File, Export, We'll go to FBX. I'm gonna to go to my desktop here. I'm gonna to go to selected objects, all right? In the export settings, we wanna turn on the triangulate faces feature. You can also do that beforehand by just pressing Control T. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but again, export as an FBX, 
selected objects, I'm gonna turn on under geometry, triangulate faces, and that should be that should be it. Then we can just export this. And then if I bring this into a different software outside of Blender, the shading is gonna be fine. Let me show you. Here it is inside of just Substance Painter. That was like the quickest one to access. But look, where do you see bad shading? It's not there. If I export the one with bad shading, I guarantee you, you're gonna get bad shading. I'm just gonna quickly show you that as well. Export that as an FBX, selected objects, triangulate faces. We'll go back into Substance Painter and you're gonna see Exporting this is gonna have bad shading. Now the matte cap in here, the lighting isn't the best to see it, but if you kind of look at it from the angle, you can see the bad shading there. It's very, very obvious compared to when we exported the ones with corrected normals. So that's it guys. I hope I blew your mind a little bit there. I, I see so much misinformation online. And honestly, years ago, I never called it out because I was like too worried about the repercussions and oh, people are gonna get mad. I don't really care anymore. I, I've just gotten to the point where I want to give you guys the right information. If it's useful to you, great. If not, that's fine as well. But there's so much bad info online and people saying like only this strategy works when that is objectively false. Like in this situation here, I just showed you, you, you don't need to read to apologize and we got a very clean result as well. There's so many nuances and context when it comes to modeling and Blender. It ultimately depends on what your goals are. It is that simple. So, you know, I try to make my videos as objective as possible. I don't like pushing too many opinions. I like to show you strategies and opportunities that you can take advantage of. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it gave you like a different way to kind of approach something like this. And yes, read topology if you want to go that route is perfectly fine as well. Just depends on your goals. Anyways, enough yapping on my end. Hope you enjoyed the video. And again, if you want to learn Blender, hard surface modeling completely from scratch, even if you're a complete beginner, in under two weeks, just like all of our students have done here, then check out our hard surface accelerator program in the description below. You're going to love it.